I'm Dean Pass. Hi there. I'm Dean Pass. and should have wear gloves. Dean Parsons can work with this. Greetings, partners. And today, we'll be reading a famous vampire text from the 2006 series, My Immortal, penned by Tara Giselby. A terrible tome. Might like the 2013 in Darkest Shadows starring Johnny Depp. Content warning there, partners. Depression, suicide, self-harm, drug abuse, homophobia, and transphobia are all found in this book. Chapter one. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, and I have long black hair. That's how I got my name. Note, vampires have black hair with purple streaks, red tips that reach my mid-back, and icy blue eyes like limpid tears. A lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. I'm not related to Gerard Way, but I wish I was, cause he's a major fucking hottie. I'm a vampire, bastards, but allowed to vote. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin, I'm also a witch, and I go to a magic school called Hogwarts, out in England, where I'm the seventh year, where I'm in the seventh year, I'm a goth, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic, and I buy all my clothes from there. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it, a black leather miniskirt, pink fishnet, black combat boots, I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. I was walking outside Hogwarts, it was snowing and raining, so there's no sun, which I was very happy about. A lot of prep started at me, but I put the middle finger at him. Hey, Ebony, I shouted, looked up, it was Draco Malfoy. What's up, Draco? I asked. Nothing, he said shyly. But then I heard my friends call me and I had to go away. Chapter two. The next day I woke up in my bedroom. It was snowing and raining. Again, I opened the door to my coffin and drank some blood, but I had a bottle I had. My coffin was black ebony, and inside was a hot pink velvet with black lace on the ends. I opened my coffin and up my giant MCI t-shirt, in which I used pajamas. Instead, I put on black leather dress, pentagram necklace, combat boots, and black fishnets on. I put on four pairs of earrings in my PSDs and put my hair in a kind of messy bun. My friend Willow woke up and grinned at me. She flipped her waist long waving black hair in pink streaks and opened her false green eyes. She put on her Marilyn Manson t-shirt with a black mini. Fishnets and pointer high heel boots. We put on our makeup and Oh my fucking god, I saw you talking to Draco Malfoy yesterday, she said excitedly. Yeah, so, I said, blushing. Do you like Draco? She said, I went out to slither and climb room into the gray hall. No, I fucking don't, he said. Yeah, right, she exclaimed. Then Draco walked up to me. Hi, he said. Hi, I replied firmly. Guess what? What? 
we have good shot and are having a good concert in Hogsmeade. Oh my fucking god. I screamed. I love Good Shot. They are my favorite band. Besides MCI. Well, do you want to go with me? He asked. I gasped. On the night of the concert, I put my black lace boots up with high heels. Underneath them were ripped fishnets. And I, then I put on a black leather mini dress with all the corset stuff on the back and front. Put on matching fishnets on my arms. I straightened my hand and made it all spiky. Felt a little depressed, so I slit one of my wrists. And I listened to some good shot. Painted my nails black and put on tons of black eyeliner. Then I put on some black lipstick. I didn't put on any foundation because I was pale anyways. Drank some human blood and I was ready to go to concert. I went outside. Draco was waiting there for me in his flying car. He was wearing a simple plan t-shirt, baggy black sweat, skater pants, and black nail polish, and a little eyeliner. Hi, Draco, I said in a depressed voice. Hi, Avenue, he said, babe. We walked back to his flying Mercedes Benz, the license plate with 666 on it, and it flew to the place of the concert. On the way, we listened excitedly to Good Charlotte and Man and Man's. We both smoked cigarettes and drugs. When we got there, we both hopped out the car. We went to the mosh pit and we started staring and jumped up and down and listening to Good Charlotte. You come in so cold, you're covered in blood. They're so happy you have arrived. The doctor cuts your cord, hands you to your bum. She sets you free into this life, sang Joel. Joel is so fucking hot, I said to Draco, pointing to him as he snug, filling the uh, club with his amazing voice. Suddenly, Draco looked sad. What's wrong? I asked him much. Then I caught on. Hey, it's okay. I don't like him better than you, I said. Really? Draco said sensitively, putting his arm around me all protective. Really, I said. Besides, I don't even know Joe, and he's gone out with Hilary Duff. I hate that little bitch, I said disgustedly, thinking of her ugly brown face. The night went on really well, and I had a great time. So did Draco. After the concert, we drank some beer and asked Benji and Joe for their autographs and photos with them. We got a good shot at concert tees. Drake and I cry back in the Mercedes Benz and Drake and I go to Hogwarts to take Drove Kai into the Forbidden Forest. Chapter 4 Draco! I shouted. What are you doing? Drake couldn't answer, but he stopped around his car and walked out in front of him too curiously. What the fucking hell? I asked angrily. Ebony, he asked. Why? I snapped. Draco leaned in extra close and I looked at his gothic red eyes. He was wearing color contacts which reveals so much depressing sorrow and evilness and suddenly I don't feel sad no more. Then suddenly, just as I, Draco kissed me passionately. Draco climbed on top of me and we started to make out keenly against a tree. He took on my top and I took off his clothes and I even took off my bra. Then he put his thingy into my you know what and we did it for the first time. Oh, 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 I screamed. I began to beginning to get an orgasm. We started to kiss everywhere. My pale body became all warm. And then, what are you doing here, you motherfuckers? It was Dumbledore. Chapter 5. Dumbledore made Draco and I follow him. And he kept shouting us angrily, you ludicrous fools. I started to cry tears of blood down my pallid face. Draco comforted me, and when he went back to the castle, Dumbledore took us to Professor Mc Snape and Professor McGonagall, who were both looking very angry. And we were having sexual intercourse in the Forbidden Forest. He yelled in a furious voice. Why did you do such a thing, you mediocre dancers? asked Professor McG McGonagall. How dare you, Professor Snape? And then Draco shrieked, because I love it. Everyone was quiet. Dumbledore Professor McGonagall looked at his mouth and said, Fine. Very well, you may go to your rooms. 
Draco and I went upstairs and TJ glared at us. Are you okay, Ebony? Draco asked me gently. Yay, I guess. I lied. I went to the girls' room and brushed my teeth and changed mine into low cut floor length black red lace hair or black high heels. And when I came out, Draco was standing in front of the bathroom and he started singing, I just want to live. I good shot it. I was so flattered. Even though he wasn't supposed to be there. He hugged and kissed and after that, he said goodnight and reluctantly went back to both our rooms. Chapter 6. The next day, I woke up in my coffin. I put on a black miniskirt that was ripped all around the end, matching top red skulls all over and high heel boots all black. I put on two pairs of skull earrings and two crosses in my ears and I spray painted them in my hair with purple. In the great hall, I ate some town chocolate with a series of blood instead of milk. I had a glass of red blood. Suddenly, someone bumped into me. All the blood spilled over my top. Bastard! I shouted angrily. I regretted saying it because I looked up because it was looking at the pale white face of a goth boy with spiky black hair, red streaks in it. And he was wearing so much eyeliner, I was going down his face and he was wearing black lipstick. He didn't have glasses anymore. He was wearing red contact lenses just like Draco's. And there was no sky on his forehead anymore. He had a manly stubble on his chin. He had a sexy English accent. He looked exactly like Joe Madden. He was so sexy that my buddy went all high when I saw him. Kind of like an erection, only I'm a girl, so I didn't get one, you sicko. I'm sorry, he said in a shy voice. That's all right. What's your name, I questioned. My name's Harry Potter, though most people call me vampire these days, he grumbled. Why, I exclaimed. Because I love the taste of human blood, he giggled. Well, I'm a vampire, I confessed. Really? He whimpered. Yeah, I roared. He said, don't talk about it. Then Drake came behind me and told me he'd despise me, so I went away with him. Chapter 7, Bring Me to Life. Draco and I held our pale white hands with black nail polish as we went upstairs. I was wearing Satan sings, Satanist sings on my nails and na red nail polish. I waved to Vampire. Dark misery was in his depressed eyes. I guess he was jealous of me that I was going out with Draco. Anyway, I went upstairs excitedly with Draco. We went to his room and locked the door and then we started Frenching passively. We took off each other's clothes enthusiastically. He that felt me up before I took off my top. Then I took off my brother bar and took off his pants. We went on the bed and he started making out naked and he put his bunny thing right and we had sex. Oh, Draco. Draco. I screamed while getting an orgasm when all of a sudden I saw a tattoo I'd never seen before on Draco's arm. It was a black hat with an arrow through it on a bloody gothic writing. Only the words were vampire. I was so angry. You bastard! I shouted angrily before jumping up the bed. No, no, you don't understand, Draco pleaded, but I knew too much. No, you fucking idiot, I shouted. You probably have AIDS anyway. Put on my clothes and huffily stomped out. Draco ran out even after he was naked. He had a really big you-know-what, but I was too mad to care. I stomped out, and once he did, I was in Vampire's classroom, and he was having less than Professor Snape and some other people. Vampire, body, you motherfucker, I yell. Chapter 8. It's getting deep in the law. Everyone in the class stared at me and Draco into the back. Even though he was naked, started to beg me to take him back. Ebony, it's not what you think. Draco I screamed sadly. My friend Bloody Mary Smith smiled at me understatedly. She flipped her long waist black hair and opened her crimson eyes like blood that was wearing contact lenses on. She had pale white skin. She was wearing white makeup on. Her mind was kidnapped. She was bald. Her real parents are vampires and one of them is a witch. But Voldemort. Killed her mother and the father committed suicide because he was depressed about it. She still has nightmares about it to this very day. It turns out her real last name was Smith and not Granger. She was converted to Satanism and she is now in Gryffindor. She is now in Slytherin, not Gryffindor. What is it you desire, you ridiculous dimwit? Snape demanded angrily in his cold voice, but I ignored him. Vampire, I can't believe you cheated on me with Drake. Oh, I shouted at him. Everyone gasped. I don't know why Ebony was so mad at me. I had went over with Vampire, I'm by, so was Ebony. For a while, but then broke my heart. He dumped me because he liked Brittany, a stupid preppy. We were just good friends now. He had gone through horrible problems, and now he's gothic. But I'm not going with Draco anymore, said Vampire. Yeah, right. Fuck off, bastard. I screamed. I ran to the room in the forward bed and forest where I lost my virility, Draco, and I started to bust into tears. 
I was so mad, I couldn't believe Draco for cheating on me. I began to cry against the tree where I did it with Draco. Then all of a sudden, a horrible man with red eyes, no nose, and everything started flying towards one of broomstick. He never knows. Basically, like Voldemort. He was wearing all the black and all this, but it wasn't gothic. It was Voldemort! Voldemort must be a powerful vampire. No! I shouted in a scared voice, but then Voldemort started imperious. I couldn't run away. Crookshanks! I shouted at him. Voldemort fell off his broom and started to scream. I felt bad, even though he was a sadist, so I stopped. Ebony yelled, Thou must kill vampire powder. I thought about vampire and his sexy eyes and his gothic black hair, and how his face looks at like Joel Madden. And I remembered that Draco, he had said, didn't understand. So I thought, what if Draco went out with vampire before I went out with them and they broke up? No, Voldemort, I shouted back. Voldemort gave me a gun. No, please, I beg. Thou must, he yelled. If thou dost not, I shall kill thy beloved Draco. How did you know? I asked in a surprised way. Voldemort got, got a, you a, you're so stupid look on your face. I have telekinesis, he answered cruelly. And if doth not kill vampire, then thou will know what happened to Draco, he shouted. Then he flew away angrily on his broomstick. I was so scared and mad, I didn't know what to do. Suddenly, Draco came into the woods. Draco, I said. Ha! Ha! He said before his face. It was wearing the white foundation, messy island, kind of like a pentagram between Joel Man and Jared Way. Are you okay? I asked. Are you okay? Uh, no, he answered. I'm sorry, I got to match you. I thought you cheated on me. I expelled. That's okay. He said, not the press. We went out to Hogwarts together, making out. Chapter 10. I was really scared about Voldemort. All day, I even upset when I went to the rehearsal of my gothic metal band, Bloody Gothic Rose 666. I'm the lead singer of it, and I play guitar. Most of us say I sound the cross between Good Shot, Slipknot, and MCI. The other people in the band are Bloody Mary, Vampire, Draco, Ron, although we call him Diabolo now, and he has a black hair with blue streaks in it, and hair grid. Only today, Draco and Vampire were depressed, so they didn't come, and we wrote songs instead. I knew Draco was probably. Uh, Draco was probably listening to good music, uh, and he was, he'd be fine because he was a vampire. And the only way you can kill a vampire is with a cross and not good music. And vampires were probably watching, see that there, that's, that's propaganda. You kill mistakes or turning him to a paste. And vampires probably watching depressing movies like The Corpse Bride. I put on the black leather shirt, showed off my boobs and tiny matching skirt, simply playing on the butt. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. We were singing a cover of Helena. At the end of the song, I suddenly burst into tears. Ebony, are you okay? Bloody Harry asked in a concerted voice. What the fuck do you think? I asked angrily. Then I said, well, Voldemort came and the fucking best told me I had to kill Harry. But I don't want to kill him because he's really nice. And if he did, go out with Draco. But I don't kill Harry. And Voldemort will fucking kill Draco. I bust into tears again. Suddenly, Draco jumped from behind a wall. Why didn't you fucking tell me? He shouted. How could you? You, you fucking pose a muggle bitch. I stood crying, crying. Draco started to cry too, all sensitive. Then he ran out crying. We practiced for one more hour. Then suddenly, Dumbledore walked in angrily. His eyes were all fired. He knew this time it wasn't because he had a headache. What are you doing? He started to cry wisely. See, that's basically not. And Ebony said, Draco behind his room. He's been watching too many movies. And I think that's where I'll leave it off today for y'all here. Next time, catch us next week. We'll finish more of the reading and we'll learn more about these dastardly vampires and how to combat them. Learn from their own texts. Learn what the propaganda is and learn about the deep vampire state. Remember, vampires are out there. Haunt them.